Hi there, let's get to it. We're talking about speed and read timing controls today. There's three ways of affecting the speed of your clips inside of DaVinci Resolve. The first would be by accessing the read time and scaling function at the bottom of your inspector on any given clip. The second would be by changing the clip speed inside of the right click option. And the third is to use the read time clip interface on the clip itself. So let's take a really quick look at all three. When I select the clip and open the inspector, I can scroll down and see that I have a read time process. By default, it's going to use the option that you've specified in your project settings. So if I click on this right now and go into my editing panel, you can see frame interpolation at the bottom and it's telling me that it's going to use frame blending to get the result. These three options are listed in the order of intensity. So nearest would be the most basic kind of frame interpolation. That means that if you were to speed up the time, it would just dump all the frames that it's not using. And if you were to increase the duration of your clip, then it would just start multiplying certain frames to try to compensate for the slower speed. It's not very processor intensive and it doesn't look too great either. Frame blend is an okay middle ground. As the name implies, it tends to take two surrounding frames and blend them into each other to construct a new frame in order to slow down the speed of a clip. Now, the best option is optical flow. This is a very high-end and processor-intensive retime process in which frames on either side are analyzed and the movement in between is reconstructed using the motion of the elements. This can get a little bit confused if you've got two moving elements in your clip that are passing across each other. But aside from that, it tends to output very good looking footage. Um, I'm going to switch over to optical flow for the highest quality output. And in case I didn't want to make this a permanent change, I could have just clicked inside of retime and scaling and changed it here. And now I can go inside the clip, right click and say change clip speed. This dialog box is pretty simple to understand. You can specify the percentage of your frame rate. So I could decide to play back at 200%, which means that the clip will play back at twice the speed. As soon as I've done that, the clip has revealed an icon in the bottom left corner telling me that there's been a retiming process applied. I'm going to go back to the dialog box and change the speed to something more dramatic so that it stands out. So instead of 100%, I'm going to go for 1000%. You can see that the clip on the timeline has gotten much shorter, and if I play it back, it plays back very, very quickly. So that's not really a problem. Where it gets interesting is when you drop down the frames. And look how smooth that motion is. You can barely tell that there's been interpolation created. The ripple sequence option allows you to change the duration of your timeline to accommodate the new length of the clip. So if I was to take this down even further to 20% and ripple the sequence, if I zoom out, you'll see that the clip has now pushed the following clip aside. Lastly, you have the option of reversing your speed in case you want to play the clip backwards. And there's also a freeze frame option in case you just want to have a still frame locked for this section of the timeline. Thank you very much for watching and until next time.